Howdy folks, welcome to Camera Shake, your go-to source for insider knowledge on everything related to photography and videography. Our mission is to keep you at the forefront of the industry, which is why we have spent literally hundreds of hours interviewing some of the most renowned photographers of our time, giving you access to knowledge and expertise that's not available anywhere else. As always, I'm your host, Kirsten Nutz, and in today's episode, we're having a closer look at Nikon's brand new Z8. Does it hold up to the hype or is it just the jack of all trades, master of none? Let's find out right after this. Welcome to Camera Shake Podcast, episode 154. But hold on, before we get into today's episode, I have one small favor to ask of you. If you enjoyed this episode, please join the Camera Shake community over on camerashakepodcast.com so that you're the first ones to know when we've got exciting news for you. You'll find the link in the description, or if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be right down here somewhere on the screen. But without further ado, let's shake it up with Nikon's brand new Z8. Now the Z8 is hot off the press and has literally been announced a few minutes ago. Or if you're watching this on Thursday, then that was yesterday, Wednesday. So I thought I'll take you through the release and highlight the most important features. We'll watch some of the release together and I'll comment on the Z8's features. And whilst I'm doing that, I'll also compare it to its closest competitor, Canon's R5, and of course Nikon's flagship, the Z9, just to see how much the Z8 has inherited from its bigger brother. All right, let's get right into it. So, the Z8, literally hot off the press. Um, I'm going to play the uh, the announcement video here. We're going to watch it together, and I'm going to stop it now and again uh, just to fill in some comments. And, well, let's just get right into it. The Z8 is the perfect follow-up to the Z9 and a true successor to the D850. Okay, let me just stop at that. So the Z8 is a follow-up to the D850. The D850 uh, was really Nikon's last great release uh, when it comes to DSLR cameras, and it's probably the best DSLR camera Nikon has ever made. The concept behind this hybrid camera is performance, usability, image quality and handling all in a compact lightweight form factor. A form factor that'll excite photographers and videographers shooting portraits, weddings, landscapes, indie films, video productions, wildlife, sports, and more. Okay, let's talk about the form factor there for a minute. Uh, for those of you who've had any experience with the, uh, the Z6 II or the Z7 II, you probably, you've noticed how small those cameras actually are. In fact, if you take the D850 as an example, that was a really chunky body. It was, you know, you really you felt like you had some weights in your hands. Uh, with the Z6 II, which is what I'm filming this with, and this is the camera I use most of the time, it's a really small camera, um, and it took a little getting used to. So, personally, I was hoping that the uh, Z8 would turn out to be a little bit um, chunky. There's been tons of rumors that have been circulating the internet over the last few months, as, as you can imagine, you know, in the run up to this release, and you know some. Some rumors that uh, either it'll be uh, they'll pack the Z8 into the, the you know the form factor of the Z7, and I remember when I heard that I thought, oh well, you know, I'd, I'd like to have a camera that's a little bit bigger. Um, imagine a Z7 or a Z6 with you know with with a battery grip. That's the sort of form factor I was looking for, I think. And I think we got that. The Z8 does look chunkier, and it looks like a more substantial camera body in your hand. Equipped with Nikon's most powerful image processing engine, most advanced autofocus system, the industry's fastest full-frame electronic shutter, a 45.7 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor, and a blackout-free viewfinder, the Z8 embodies professional performance. Okay, if we have a look at these uh, specs here, they've literally taken the Z9 technology and put it into a smaller body. The X Speed 7, um, that's the same chip as, as you find in the Z9. Um, Intelligent AF built from deep learning again. They've just taken the, the exact same autofocus system uh, from from the Z9 and packed it into the Z8, which is great news actually. Uh, fast full frame electronic shutter. Well, so there's been some speculation as to whether the Z8 would have a mechanical shutter as well. Sounds like it won't. Um, it'll be it'll be electronic shutter only. Now, uh, 
My opinion on that is electronic shutters are really the future. So here we go. I mean, you know, mechanical shutters are good for some things, but actually, you know, we're just introducing another mechanical thing into the into the camera body that can potentially fail. And you know, getting rid of that, in my view, uh, really future proofs the the camera itself, and that's the way to go. And I'm pretty sure Nikon aren't the only ones um, who are you know, limiting themselves to an electronic shutter only. Um, I'm pretty sure Canon and all the other competitors will follow suit in the not-too-distant future. Um, the 45 megapixel stacked CMOS sensor, that's the exact same sensor, um, I guess, uh, as as we found in the Z9. Um, the real-life blackout free view. In fact, well, that is uh, actually really cool. So if you're shooting wildlife, imagine if you're tracking a bird or um, if you're shooting sports and you're tracking a runner or something that's moving very fast, not having these blackouts is super useful. Uh, that is really going to make a massive, um, you know, it's a massive advantage in comparison to the Z6. Anyway, let's have a listen to some more specs here. That means sharper, crisper images, ultra high resolutions, fast frame rates, files with extraordinary details and natural colors that make post-production work a dream. All that in a body that is 30% lighter and smaller than the Z9, and even 15% smaller than the D850. Again, coming back to the body size, uh, I think this is really important. It's you know it's bigger than a C7, um, which is a good thing, but it's still 30% smaller than the Z9. I shot with uh, two Z9s not too long ago, and I, I have to say they were quite on the heavy side. Um, I did like the handling of it, and I like the ergonomics and everything, but uh, that's a big body, and Again, the D850, it's a chunky piece of equipment. Um, if you're coming from the D750, for example, I think for me, that was just the perfect size. The D750 was just, it was they perfect in my hands. Uh, had the right weight. It was relatively light. It was lighter than the D810 or the D850. Um, and yet the performance was as far, well, we're not talking video here, but as far as the photography side was concerned, I loved the, the, the sensor in it and... Um, the D750 has really served me very well for a very long time in loads of different scenarios, from low light shooting, you know, and concerts to uh, shooting portraits. They said in a studio for for many many years. So I love that camera, and I'm really quite happy moving into the world of mirrorless. Um, and now having shot the Z6 two for I don't know six months or so, I'm very happy with that camera too. But those specs on the Z8 are very enticing. And if you shoot video, not only does this camera record an 8K 60p 12-bit RAW, but also 10-bit ProRes 422, all in camera. Now, what, are, what does that mean? Um, the video specs are incredible in this camera. I really have taken some of the Z9 video specs and uh, put it into, into the Z8. Uh, what that really means is, with the Z7 II and the Z6 II, um, you could shoot at those bit rates, but you'd have you'd have to have uh, an external recorder, which is a pain in the neck if you think about it, because you've got to rig the whole thing up. Um, it's it becomes difficult to have the camera on a gimbal, for example, and you've got to have an uh, you know uh, an external recorder like a like a Ninja, for example, or something like that. Um, and it's just it's just a pain in the neck because it's another thing. There's more cables and all the rest of it. Now with the Z8, being able to shoot that in camera is beautiful because it just simply means you can take the camera body and you can attach it to a gimbal. And you're free to free to move. Why would anybody want to shoot 8K? Um, it doesn't on the surface. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Uh, the advantage of that is that you're able to crop in quite dramatically. So you can make you can create one shot and then make that look like it's it's been recorded with several cameras. So you have like a slightly wide angle and a and a slightly closer angle. That makes sense. Um, it works just as well with 4K. Um, 8K the file size are going to be huge, and then you're looking at upgrading your computer as well. I see you're editing that those sort of files. But I guess it is future-proofing um, the Z8 for a good few years to come. Again, if you look at what Canon are doing with the video specs on the R5, for example, and I know the R5 is necessarily the greatest comparison in the sense that that camera is a few years old now, but it is the direct competitor to the Z8 in Canon's lineup. And there are rumors flying around uh, about what the R5 II might look like, but that camera is now yet, so we're going to have to take the R5 as a comparison. And again, when we come to the video specs, um, it's very, very similar. So the R5 records in 8K, for instance, 8K raw 12-bit, 4K at uh, 120p, exactly the same specs as um, as the Nikon Z8. So now Nikon's really 
uh, you know come up to the come up to the line with with the R5. So again, in that in that sector, that's the expectation now, I guess. From tracking and hit rate and subject detection to low light accuracy, the Z8 is equipped with the same powerful autofocusing system as the Z9. Using Nikon's proprietary deep learning algorithms, the autofocusing system continues to evolve, becoming more sophisticated through constant development. So they've also added a few subject tracking modes there. Now you can not only track eyes, you know, humans, animals, and so on, uh, but also trains and planes. For all of those, for all of those plane photographers out there, Z9 owners will recognize this with the multiple firmware updates available to them, adding entirely new features and improvements. Yeah, so this is the thing with the Z9. Uh, when the Z9 first came out, um, the autofocus was really good, but somewhat underwhelming, I guess. And I could have fixed some of those issues with subsequent firmware updates. So what I've done is they've basically just taken the latest version of that autofocus and put it into Z8. Subject detection is so intelligent that it can identify nine different types of subjects and track them with precision. This ranges from humans, animals, bikes, motorbikes, cars, trains, and now planes. Right, 3D tracking. Now, I remember there was a, a big hoo-ha um, when the Z6 and the Z7 came out because Nikon had done away with the 3D tracking in those cameras. And if you were shooting with the D750 or the D850, then 3D tracking was one of those most popular uh, autofocus modes. And I guess it's back. Looks like it's back. Users of the Z8 don't have to manually push an individual focus point to lock on and compose their subject. Instead, the Z8 will make a focus point bigger or smaller on the subject and even narrow down the point when it detects heads or eyes. The Z8's powerful combination of subject detection and 3D tracking allows you to easily capture fast, erratically moving subjects such as birds, planes, and people, and keeps them in sharp focus. And those working in low light settings or night scenarios will appreciate that the Z8 can detect focus up to negative seven EV. Couple that with starlight view mode and the camera can focus in a jaw dropping negative nine EV. And well, this creates new opportunities for photographers and videographers who shoot weddings, indoor sports, sunrises, night skies, and epic landscapes. Starlight view mode. Traditionally, interchangeable lens cameras will have a mechanical shutter curtain. And the purpose of this curtain is to open to let light hit the sensor and close to keep light out. But with Nikon innovations in image processing and sensor design, we were able to eliminate this mechanical shutter, relying exclusively on an electronic shutter that's built into a full frame stack CMOS sensor with the world's fastest scan rate. Again, there was a lot of discussion about whether the Z8 would still have a mechanical shutter and whether the electronic shutter only would be something that's, uh, that Nikon either keep just for the Z9. Um, I think Nikon are done with a mechanical shutter. I don't think that in those kind of bodies we'll see the return of a mechanical shutter at any time in the future. What does this mean? Well, virtually no internal moving parts, no wear and tear on the shutter, the ability to shoot up to one thirty-two thousandth of a second, and the shutter is absolutely silent. That is huge. Um, no wear and tear. The shutter mechanism is one of those uh, mechanisms in any DSLR, for example, that will take the brunt and uh, is, you know, doomed to fail at some point. So getting rid of that is an absolute advantage. Um, shutter speeds of uh, one thirty-two thousandth of a second. That's incredible. Uh, and of course, silent shooting for any you know any event or wedding photographer, uh, that's an absolute must. The Z8's 45 megapixel backside illuminated CMOS sensor provides impressive detail even in low light, giving you the flexibility to shoot at higher ISOs when the situation demands. What's also flexible is your output options. Not only do you have the conventional 14-bit RAW and 8-bit JPEG file formats, but also two new additions for people looking to maximize the quality of their images while minimizing the size of their files. First is the 14-bit high-efficiency RAW, which retains the outstanding image quality of traditional RAW at approximately a third the file size. That is, again, that's huge. Our 14 bit high efficiency raw. What that means is if you're an event photographer or, or a wedding photographer or a concert photographer and you regularly 
you know, um, come home with like 3,000, 4,000 images, uh, being able to, you know, use a format that has a higher rate of compression without any, uh, you know, loss in image quality, that's amazing because it means that, hey, you fit more images on your card. Great. Uh, but also it doesn't take up as much hard drive space at home. So in itself, that's phenomenal. Wedding and event photographers, as well as sports shooters tasked with capturing hundreds or even thousands of shots on the job will benefit from this groundbreaking raw compression technology. And second is 10-bit Hyf, a first for Nikon cameras. This file format retains richer tonal gradation than JPEG with increased luminance at a comparable file size. Basically, a broader dynamic range that can be viewed on HLG-compatible TVs and PQ-compatible computer monitors and devices. This is great for all kinds of photography, including landscapes and portraiture. It's also great for making 8K HLG time-lapse videos in camera. To make sure your photos are tack sharp, the Z8's autofocus system is so sophisticated it can track the eyes of people, pets, and birds, even when they're small in the frame. Couple that with the many AF area mode options, and you can designate specific areas in your frame where you want the autofocus to identify your subjects. That's super important. Uh, what that means is, is that you can you know, use something like eye detection, for example, um, eye autofocus, but you can just assign an area on the screen. So if you are filming a person in a crowd of people, rather than the eye autofocus getting confused and locking onto this person's eyes or that person's eyes, you can literally just draw a box over, that, over your main subject's face, let's say, and you can tell the camera only to identify the eyes in this particular section of the screen. Uh, that is extremely useful. It sounds like a small thing, but even when um, I was filming people at the photography show, for example, where, you know, there's a huge crowd of people, you just want to, you want the IO to focus to log on to one particular person, whilst there's lots of other people coming in and out of the shot. Um, it means that the, the autofocus won't get confused and it will just literally stay locked on the person that you're actually attending to film. So that's great. And the Z8 has some new features for portrait photographers. Portrait Impression Balance gives you simple control over hues and brightness levels to fine-tune skin tones. Skin Softening uses the Z8's intelligent deep learning algorithm to make skin look best while keeping eyes and hair tack sharp. I think that's something that we're going to be seeing a lot more of um, over the next few years. Uh, what that basically really is, is it's almost like a form of um, image processing in camera, but it's an intelligent form of of processing. So I think we'll see AI creep into our camera bodies there. And again, super useful thing. Uh, when we're shooting at 45 megapixels, um, you know, with the camera bodies that we have today and the super sharp lenses that we have today, you know, skin tone is, is you know, it can be very detrimental to have something that's that sharp um, photographing skin, especially if you want to try and keep the eyes tack sharp. Um, I think having the ability to soften skin in camera, uh, that can come in really rather handy. And improved white balance gives you more manual control for making subtle adjustments to your baseline color. Conventional mirrorless systems capturing 10 or 12-bit video often require the addition of large external devices, which in turn require their own power, storage media, cords, and rigs to attach. But not the Z8. The Z8 gives you the flexibility to shoot gorgeous, full frame 8K footage up to 60p and 4K footage up to 120p slow motion in camera, meaning no external device. Again, those specs are pretty much what's expected nowadays. Um, the, the exact same specs that you find with the Canon R5. And you know, bearing in mind that the R5 is a good few years old, um, Nikon are a little late to the game with having these video specs in uh, what I would call a prosumer body. Um, and it's great that they've they've finally arrived. Um, that is, you know, where things need to be at. I think it'll be interesting to see what Canon will do next with the R5 II. But for now, I think Nikon have have landed uh, with those video specs. And again, as I mentioned earlier, not having to attach extra, um, you know, external recorders uh, to your to your rig. Uh, that's just saves a lot of weight, and um, it's good for your arm muscles. This camera is built to be agile, allowing videographers to work more efficiently with a smaller setup and saves time and money. How so? 
With internal recording codecs that include 10-bit ProRes 422HQ, 12-bit 8K NRAW, 12-bit 4K ProRes RAW HQ, and H.265, the Z8 eliminates the need for an external recording device and all the cables and rigging required to piece it all together. Instead, the Z8 records directly to the card slots built into the camera. Now you can hold the camera and move around more comfortably and smoothly, giving you the advantage of a lighter camera system when shooting handheld or on a gimbal with fewer cables and less setup time. That's exactly why I've, I love the uh, the Canon R6, for instance, for video, or uh, the, the Nikon Z6 II. I've really enjoyed filming with that. It's a smaller body. Um, it fits very well on a gimbal, um, and there's really no need for, for any external devices. And just right out of the gate, you actually get some great imagery. So that is going to be very useful for Nikon Air. The processing power of the Z8's XSpeed 7 engine is what makes this all possible. XSpeed 7 is 10 times faster than its predecessor and unleashes the potential for more compelling video making. And that's, again, it's a really important aspect. The XSpeed 7, 10 times faster than the XSpeed 6. And um, if you remember, the original Z6 and Z7 had one XSpeed 6 processor in the, in the body. When Nikon came out with the, the follow-up models, the Z6 II and the Z7 II, what they did was they simply put two of those processors in the body, which uh, kind of you know, increase the, the processing power. But 10 times faster than the XSpeed 6, that would make it five times faster than the Z6 II. Huh. From extreme resolutions without cropping to long continuous recording times in 8 and 4K, as well as fast, accurate focusing. Speaking of focusing, the Z8's face and eye detection is so good, it can detect and track eyes even with sunglasses on. And it's so accurate that it can detect faces that take up as little as 3% of the frame's longest side. This is especially useful when capturing environmental scenes with people. For example, when you want to keep a wedding couple in sharp focus within an expansive landscape. But even more impressive, it also means that videographers can lock in on a person approaching from a distance, keeping the focus on the subject running toward the camera. And just like when shooting photos, subject detection, which can identify and lock focus on humans, birds, pets, vehicles, and more, works in combination with a variety of focus area modes, including subject tracking, so you can be super confident that you're getting the most important part of the shot in sharp focus. So you go with subject tracking, greatly enhanced, It'd be super interesting to actually try that out um, in reality and see how good it actually is. Focus area modes are a big important part of the Z8's autofocus system, especially for video. Whether you're isolating a subject that you want to keep in focus or you're getting creative with focus pulls, there are many variety of focus area options, including the ability to customize your own focus area space, giving you maximum freedom to compose shots any way you'd like. The Z8 is loaded with essential tools built into the camera specifically for the videographer. And these include a waveform monitor and zebra stripes for checking exposure. Focus peaking for confirming sharpness when manual focusing. Linear focus for consistency when rotating the focus ring. Custom AF speed and tracking settings. Fine ISO adjustments. Time code linking to an Atomos UltraSync Blue device. So some of these settings, like the waveform, monitor, for example, um, that's really something that's pretty much standard in just about any Canon camera these days. Um, and it was about time that Nikon came up with the goods there. Uh, that's been missing for some time. Raw proxy files for easier post-production and more. And rest assured, you'll always know when you're rolling because the LCD will show a red border anytime you're recording. That I like. And just a note for those of you who may be more familiar with manual focusing on non-Nikon video systems, the Z8 gives you the option to customize the direction of rotation of the focusing ring on the lenses as well as all the wheels on the camera. There are so many great features built into the Z8's video systems, it's impossible to mention them all here. The combination of power, performance, and compactness opens the door to so many great opportunities for videographers and hybrid shooters. Now, who is this camera meant for? quite clearly hybrid shooters. Hybrid shooters being people who shoot stills as well as video. And uh, I think I'm probably the perfect example for that because I use my camera for both 
all the time. And if you've never used a camera for video, this might just be the right time. Having a camera with a sensor that achieves the world's fastest scanning speed and a processor that's just pure power opens up so many doors when it comes to high speed and fast action shooting. So again, those uh, specs are very similar, if not identical with the Z9. So again, you know, we're seeing the Z9 technology trickle down to the Z8, which is great. Following in the footsteps of the Z9, the Z8 carries over all of the features that sports, action, and wildlife photographers crave, from ultra-fast frame rates to precision autofocusing and a blackout-free viewfinder. While raw images can be taken at 20 frames per second for more than 1,000 frames per burst, JPEGs can be taken at unheard of frame rates from 20, 30, 60, all the way up to 120 still frames per second. This means that your odds of landing the decisive shot are much, much greater, whether it's a bird in flight or a peak action moment at a sporting event. And to take things even further, the Z8 has a pre-release capture mode that starts shooting a full second in advance of fully pressing the shutter release button, making those decisive moments even easier to catch at 120 frames per second. Again, same thing as with the Z9. It knows when you want to press the shutter button before you even press the shutter button. Mm -hmm. The robot overloads are bad. So while you're tracking the subject, you want to photograph the camera is temporarily storing photos in the buffer just in case you weren't quick enough to press the shutter release button when the action actually happens. The Z8 is also incredibly reliable handheld. It's equipped with a five-axis image stabilization system that keeps things sharp. Coupled with select Z-series lenses with optical VR built in, the Z8's synchro VR feature will activate, achieving an effect equivalent to six stops of image stabilization. Okay, what that means is that the camera body itself contains a five-axis image stabilization system, um, but the some of the Z lenses also have image stabilization built in. And you can combine that to get even better results. Although that being said, when it comes to image stabilization, I think Nikon are still trading behind Canon uh, by quite a bit. Uh, Canon's image stabilization is still a couple of stops better. So we're talking we're talking six stops uh, for the Z8, um, the R5 that came out two years ago. Uh, features up to eight stops with compatible lenses. So we're trailing a little bit behind there, I think, still. And to ensure you're keeping an eye on the peak action, the Z8's truly blackout-free real-live viewfinder gives you a what-you-see-is-what-you-get experience with no skipped frames or loss of view during fast, continuous burst shooting. Imagine the advantage you now have when panning and following erratically moving subjects. Okay, now that we're getting into the lenses, uh, let's wrap this up real quick. Um, who is the Z8 for? Well, it's a hybrid camera, perfect for people who are into shooting stills and shooting video. This camera is so packed with feature that it's really the ideal camera, no matter whether you're shooting landscape, sports, action, um, studio work, or whatever it may be. Uh, it really has everything you want and more. I've been blown away by the features in this camera. I was hoping that they would take some of the Z9 um, specs and uh, put in the Z8, but I'm really very positively surprised um, to see that they've literally just taken the Z9, um, molded it into a smaller body and made it uh, smaller, lighter, more practical, and a whole lot cheaper. So if we're talking about price for a minute, you know, uh, the interesting thing uh, about that is, you know, the Z9, will set you back and we're talking british pounds here so you can you know you can convert it into us dollars or canadian dollars or whatever you're into um so the z9 will set you back 5299 great british pounds um that's a whole lot of dough now the nikon z8 has been released with a price tag of 3999 um british pounds that is 1300 quid cheaper um for the same specs, so you're really getting a mini Z9 for a lot less money, which is incredible value. You also got to remember that the Canon R5 retails still at four thousand two hundred ninety-nine pounds, so that is three hundred pounds more expensive than the Z8. So the, the Z8 is really it's a great value camera, really, when it comes to that. I don't know, four grand is still four grand, but you're getting a stills camera that is exceptional and to get in the, you get in a video camera with all the specs that you'd ever want and more um 
So I think what Nikon have done here is really quite exceptional. I'd like to get my hands on one and do a real world test at some point. Nikon, if you're listening, um, send one over to me. That'll be fun. Okay, folks, that's all for today. This truly is an incredible camera body coming your way. And just for shits and giggles, check out episode 101 that Nick and me recorded a little over a year ago. We were predicting the Z8's features back then. So find out how close we were or how hopelessly wrong we got it in episode 101. And for those of you who are listening to the audio version of this podcast, did you know that there's a fully fledged video version over on YouTube with plenty of examples of our guest photography in full Technicolor? All you have to do is go over to YouTube, search for Camera Shake Podcast, and you'll be able to watch all past episodes on there. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, we'd love to hear it. Your comments are incredibly valuable to us and help us improve our content. So please don't hesitate to share your thoughts. Remember to hit the like button, ring that bell, and share with your friends. You can help us reach a greater audience all over the world. Once again, thank you for listening and watching, and I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.